Howdy, coding cowgirls and cowboys. It's Prof G. Get ready to giddy up because in this lesson, we're going to learn to push our Xcode projects to GitHub. This is going to allow you to back up your projects. It'll allow you to begin building your Swift UI projects portfolio. And my students will also submit their weekly work via GitHub Classroom. Now, there will be a lot more on GitHub offered in a future lesson, but I want to give you that first step, which is committing code to Git on your Mac, then pushing the code up to GitHub in the cloud. Ready to learn big? Then let's wrangle some code. Giddy up! Now I'm assuming if you're here, you already created a GitHub account and configured Xcode with GitHub. If you haven't created a GitHub account and configured Xcode to work with GitHub, the steps on how to do that are in an earlier lesson that you can find in our course playlist. Now there's a specific set of terms around the products and techniques that we're going to be using. It's probably unfamiliar to newbies, but you really need to know these terms as a software developer, so let's drop some knowledge on the most basic terms. So source control will allow us to save copies of our software development projects. You'll want to do that for several reasons. You'll want to save versions over time to keep track of what new features were added and what bugs were fixed. You might want to revert back to an earlier version, say if a change created a bug, or if you decided you didn't want to include a feature that you were experimenting with. You'll use source control to share your code with others, and source control is vital when you're working on projects as the member of a team. Now, you probably also noticed from our earlier lessons that we weren't saving anything, and that's because Xcode saves changes automatically. There is a save option under the file menu, but we really don't use that. But source control is different from this ongoing project saving that happens in Xcode. What we do with source control is we create discrete copies or snapshots of our entire project and all of its files at a given point in time, say after we finish a lesson or after we added a feature. So instead of the ongoing saving, we're going to specifically say, okay, now is time to save a version in source control. Now we'll be using two products that Xcode connects to to handle source control. Those are Git and GitHub. Git is open source version control software that you've already got on your Mac. And when we use Git to save versions of our project, those projects are saved locally to your Mac's hard drive. Now GitHub is a web-based service that's actually owned by Microsoft now, and that allows us to take versions we're saving locally and push them into the cloud. This gives us a backup of our project in the cloud, and it allows others to access our projects if we want to share it with them. Now our primary holding place for a project is referred to as a repo or repository. And each version of a project that you save is called a commit. So you can have several commits inside of a repo. You might consider a repo as being kind of like a folder that holds all versions of all the files in your projects, while the commits are individual versions that you've saved in the repo. And as you work through the lessons, you probably want to commit after each lesson and certainly when you're done with an app. And just one more term for now. When we push, we're saving changes that we've committed locally into the cloud. In our case, we're pushing them up to GitHub. And a push syncs up any local commits on our computer with what we've got in our GitHub repository. We're going to see all these terms in action during our tutorial, so hopefully that'll help you understand them better. And there are quite a few other terms involved in Git and GitHub, branch, merge, fetch, pull, pull request, but we're going to stick with these ones for now. And one more note to my students. So these instructions are for saving your work to your own Git and GitHub repositories, and you want to use these techniques. But you'll also be submitting your weekly work via GitHub Classroom, and the teaching assistants will provide more information about that. Now you probably quit Xcode since we last had a lesson, and remember to get back into a project you were working on, you can launch Xcode, and as long as you didn't move your project folder, it should be listed in the recently opened projects list at the right side of the Xcode welcome screen, so you can just double click that to open up, or as an alternative, you can just open your project folder on your desktop or wherever you stored it on your computer, find the Xcode proj file, double click that, and that will also open Xcode with that project loaded. And if it loads with canvas paused, click the reload button. It might take a few seconds for this to show up the first time. Readjust your screen. This is as we left it after our last lesson. Now one thing I want you to notice is in the left hand column, we see these light blue lines here. These are change indicators. They show up when something has been changed since the last commit. Remember a commit is a project saved to Git. Since we haven't committed anything, then these change indicators indicate any change we've made so far in this project. And you might remember in our prior lesson, we added spaces around the V stack and we made changes to the views and modifiers inside. So all of those lines with a change indicator next to them have what we would call uncommitted changes. Now, another thing that you'll notice is if you open up the project navigator, there's an M next to the content view. This means that this file has modifications that have uncommitted changes. Now let's try this together so that we can see change indicators forming in action. Let's click behind the close and curly in the V stack and watch what happens as we press return. See a change indicator show up in the left hand side? 
I'll enter a comment in Swift. Comments don't execute as code. They're used to document our code. So I'll say double slash here. Anything after a double slash doesn't execute as code. And I'll just write new stuff here. Now, if you decided you wanted to get rid of this, you could highlight and delete the comment line. But also, if you go over here into the left hand side and click on the change indicator, you see that you can click an option that says discard the change and it goes back to how things were before the last commit. And again, since we haven't committed anything, it goes back to whatever was here when we originally created the project. So now let's learn how we can commit to Git on our Mac and then push those saved changes to the cloud. Now we're going to be working with source control and we'll do this by heading to the source control navigator. Now this is the second icon from the left in the navigator pane. It sort of looks like a square with an X and a circle inside of it. And the tooltip says show source control navigator. So click that. Under the changes option, you'll see uncommitted changes. And if you click on content view, you'll see the original code before the change in gray and the changes we made are in a light blue just below that. Now you can ignore this Xcode debugger folder. It's actually something that's created temporarily by Xcode. I'm not even sure why it's in here, but most of the time you're just going to click on this repositories button that you see here. That's just below the navigator icons. And if the information in here isn't exposed, you can just click on the expansion triangle so that it points down and you'll eventually learn about branches. Those are where you can veer off and create separate code change along two different paths. And you can actually merge those branches back together again. We're going to ignore that right now. We're just going to be working in the default or main branch and we have no remote set up. Now remotes for us are going to be repositories in GitHub. That's the place in the cloud where we're going to store different versions or commits of our project. So let's first create that GitHub repo, that remote that we can use on GitHub. Now let's right click on remotes and select new. You are awesome remote. This is going to create a new remote for us to use a new repo or a repository in GitHub. Now you should only need to do this once per project. And after you select this, this dialogue will help you create the remote. So if you've configured GitHub properly in the Xcode setup lesson, you should see you as the account and owner. This comes from the GitHub account that you added to your Xcode configuration. And the repository name is by default, the same name as your project. You can change this if you want, but no need to. Since I update this every year, I'm going to add 26 to the end of this because I already have a UR awesome repository. And for the description, I'll write chapter one from Professor Gallagher's Swift UI course. Now you don't have to make your repos public, but I recommend students keep their repos visible unless they're working on something super secret like a startup. Now, if you're doing work for your employer, they're not going to want you to display this publicly either. But for students, I recommend that you put all your course projects publicly available because employers are going to look for this. It's always a good idea for students to show cool projects as well as the progression as they learn a new skill. I've had students hired based on GitHub repos that employers have found. In fact, that's kind of a red flag if you're a CS student and you don't have projects publicly available in GitHub. It's okay if they're basic projects initially. All software engineers know that you got to start someplace. And as you have rapid learning documented in your repos, well, that's a good sign. Also, don't be surprised if what you have in your repos becomes a talking point in interviews. I've had students tell me that during interviews, some employers have said, hey, looks like you took Gallagher Swift UI course. And then you can tell them about all the awesome new skills that you have and the apps that you've developed based on that. Now leave the remote name as origin, which is always the default that we'll create with a new GitHub repo, then click on create. And after a few moments, this goes away and you see origin under remotes. So now we've got a holding place in GitHub where we can push our saved commits to. Want to see it? Why don't we right click on origin on the left hand side, select view on GitHub, and your browser will pop up in the exact location of the repo you just created. Now you should see two things in here. One is you are awesome dot Xcode proj. It's listed as a folder because this is actually behind the scenes, what Mac OS would call a package. There are actually additional files secretly hidden inside of this, but we never really need to go into the Xcode proj file. But why don't we click on the you are awesome folder and we see all of the files that show up in our project navigator. Cool. So let's go in here and click on content view dot Swift, but Hey, this isn't our current version of code. This is the code Xcode gave us when we started. See how this is the globe image and the text says hello world. Now this is what happens. The first repo that you set up will take that first version of the app, which is the unmodified stuff that Xcode gave us at the start. So to get the latest version in here, we need to commit, which means save any of our modifications locally to get on your Mac and then push, which means push up that latest commit to GitHub in the cloud. I'm going to press the browser back button once and then head back to Xcode. 
So let's do this. I'm going to return to Xcode to the integrate menu. Integrate used to be called source control, which I thought was a better name. Now it's called integrate. And we can pull down here and select commit. Now you'll see this screen show up and you can review any changes here. But we know we just want to commit all the changes and then push them to the cloud. So follow these steps. And this part isn't especially clear, so really pay attention to this. What we're eventually going to want to do is to click on this commit button and pull down its little menu. But we can see that it's disabled now. And the reason why this is disabled is because it's required to first enter a commit message, which is a comment that describes the changes you're about to submit. Now there's a big empty box with gray text in here that says commit message in parentheses required. This is really easy to miss. The text is small. So you've got to enter a commit message for each commit. I'm going to put in the message that says updates after first lesson. Then we want to stage or set up all the changes that we want to commit. Now you could go through all of the changes you made one by one. We haven't made all that many changes and we know we want to commit them all. So there's a button over here on the right that says stage all. Click on that. That's going to stage all our changes, which means prepare to commit all of our changes. When you've clicked this, you can see that it changes to unstage all. And now don't click the commit button, but click and hold and pull down on the little menu in this button. And you see this reveals an option that says commit and push, select that. That allows us to both commit, which means save a version locally to Git on our Mac, and push that committed version to GitHub in the cloud. Now this little push local changes box shows up. We only have one branch to push things, that's the origin slash main, so we'll just select push, and after a brief chugga chugga, you'll see no changes in the changes pane on the left. And if we click back in Project Navigator, let's click on Content View. Remember how Content View had an M next to it to indicate that they were unsaved modifications? Well, that M is gone, and we see all the blue unsaved changes lines on the left are gone as well. That's because we've committed everything, we've saved it locally. Now that M and the unsaved changes indicators are linked to Git. So if you commit, those go away. They're not linked to push, so you want to make sure that you commit and push so that everything is in the cloud in GitHub as well. Now to show you that everything's in here, you can actually return to the browser. And if I click on the leftmost You Are Awesome in this breadcrumbs trail, I'm at the first page of the You Are Awesome app, remember with the Xcode proj, and that You are awesome folder, but I can also see the commit message I added after each of these. It says updates after first lesson. And now if we head into the bottom, you are awesome folder and we click on content view dot swift. Hey, we see that we have all of the updates. The image is now the swift. It's got our modifier changes in here. The text is now you are awesome. Cool. So let's head back to that main you are awesome page. Just click the back button twice and click you are awesome at the start of the breadcrumb trail. And again, we see dot Xcode proj and you are awesome in here. And notice this area down here with the add readme button. Now, if you click on this, you're actually going to be able to create a file that describes your project. You can even put screenshots in here and short videos. I really recommend you do this. My students are all going to have to complete a final project for the app showcase. And I absolutely want you to put screenshots and information about your project in here, a little video demonstrating it. I'll click commit changes in the browser up here. And this will allow me to commit changes so you can see what the readme looks like. Cool. Again, that's a great thing for potential employers to see too. They can quickly scan your project projects and see all the awesomeness you've created and be impressed by your mad skills. And let me show you something else that's very important. Click on the You Are Awesome up at the top of your breadcrumb trail to get to the first page in your repo. Imagine your computer crashed or you want to load your code on another computer. And let's simulate this now. So I'm going to head back over to Xcode, quit out of Xcode, find my You Are Awesome project. Mine is on the desktop and I'm going to throw it in the trash. But fear not, friends. We can head back to the web page. We happen to be at the first page of the GitHub repo. And in the upper right hand corner, we've got this green code button. Click on that and you'll see a pull down menu. And look at this, Super Swifters. We've got an option in here that says open with Xcode. Select that bad boy. You'll be asked to allow this project to download it from the internet to open in Xcode. Click allow. Xcode launches, you can select where you want to save this. I'm going to save mine right on the desktop. And since I had a 26 at the end of my UR Awesome, that was the name of the remote repo that I set up. You probably didn't add the 26, but just to get things exactly as they were on the desktop, I'm going to delete the 26 and then click close. I'll trust and open this project coming from the internet. Double click on the gray area in the title bar to expand Xcode to full screen. I'll click my content view, click the resume button next to canvas paused. And look at that GitHub greatness. We have our project restored from the web. This is the version that has the image of the Swift. It's in orange. We've got the text, you are awesome, outstanding. So now you know how to commit to Git, push to GitHub, set up a readme file, and download versions of your projects. So let's do one more change and then commit and push to make sure that you know all the steps. Why don't you change the text string from you are awesome to 
I am a developer. Notice we've got an unsaved change indicator on the left and the M shows up in front of the content view. So now we can go under the integrate menu and select commit. Notice we're now in the source code navigator. I'm gonna click on the stage all button. Also make sure that you enter a commit message. I'll just write added, I am a developer. Now we see the commit button is enabled, but you wanna click and pull down on this and select commit and push. Origin and main shows up, just click on the push button. This chugs away, you should now be fully committed. Let's head over to our browser and take a look at what was pushed. I'm gonna click on the browser refresh so that I see the latest version that was pushed up here. Sure enough, the commit messages now say added, I am a developer. Let's click in the UR awesome folder, get inside content view.swift. And if we take a look down here, we can see it indeed says I am a developer. Nice. So you should repeat the steps to commit and push after every lesson. And for every new app that we create, you wanna create a new remote for that as well. And if we head back over to Xcode, we need to click the folder in the navigator's pane to get to the project navigator. We see there's no more M next to content view, so all of our changes have been committed. And if we click on content view, we no longer see any unsaved changes. So here's your crib sheet to remind you of everything we just learned. So to commit, which means save locally to Git on your Mac and push to GitHub in the cloud, and you wanna commit and push after each lesson, you wanna select the integrate menu and then commit, enter a commit message, click stage all, pull down on the commit button and select commit and push, then click push in the push local changes to box. Now to create a new GitHub repo in Xcode, and you're gonna to wanna to create a new repo for each new app project. That's gonna be pretty much each chapter in our course. In your new project, you should open the source control navigator, click repositories, find and right click on remotes and select new, your project name remote, then enter a description and press create. And note the first time that you do this, the code that's committed and pushed is the original code created by Xcode, not your latest changes. So be sure to follow this with the commit and push steps above. Good work, Swifter. You're getting those GitHub skills down. Be sure to come back for more app building lessons. Keep hacking.